Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I'm your host, James, and today we are going to be talking about the episode Senil's Sick Day. But first, a bit of irony. Uh, you may have noticed that it has been over two weeks since you got an episode. And um, the reason for that is I actually got sick. And the irony of this is not lost on me. So, um, I, I am still a little sick. I mean, I'm not sick. I just have a lingering cough. It's just... You know, just one of those things, so I'm probably going to have to interrupt myself a lot here, but on with the show we shall go. So, the episode starts with Mrs. Twombly carrying a bunch of boxes, and uh, they're having trouble balancing, and the phone rings, and she drops them, but she gets up to pick up the phone. And then Zoe walks by. As Mrs. Tromley takes the phone call about missing someone at the day camp, Zoe grows concerned and gets even more worried when Mrs. T says they are sick. Mrs. Tromley reveals that it is Sunil who is sick, although we know this from the title, but... And Zoe gets upset about this and goes into the play area, so we see Russell... Pepper, Minka, and Penny uh, playing on a chair, which, I mean, if Zoe knew they were there, that would probably limit who Mrs. T was talking about in the conversation, but, you know, whatever. And Zoe bursts in and exclaims that she has a secret and asks who wants to hear it. Pepper, Minka, and Russell are excited, but Penny says, I thought you weren't supposed to tell secrets. Zoe's like, where's the fun in that? So Zoe whispers the fact that Sunil is sick to Pepper, and it turns into a game of telephone, which ends when Penny exclaims that the phrase said is not Sunil is sick, but Cyril McFlip. Russell asks who this is and gets frustrated because he thinks that he is a new pet and is always the last to know about these things, and storms off. So, after the theme song, uh, Mrs. Tomley is still on the phone with Sunil's owners, and they want a babysitter for Sunil. Mrs. Twombly calls for Blythe one way, but Blythe comes up the other way, which spooks Mrs. Twombly for a little bit. And Mrs. Twombly says that Sunil is sick, and their owners want someone to look after him. And Blythe says, you had me at Sunil is sick and their owners want someone to look after him. And that confuses Mrs. Tromley because it's probably one of the first bits of absurdist humor that Blythe has attempted. Yeah, I don't know. This It seems weird. But uh, then... Mrs. Tromley reports to Sunil's owner that Blythe is available. So, back in the play area, Zoe explains to Russell that the message wasn't Cyril McFlip, it was Sunil is sick. Russell says, oh, I hate telephone. So, the pets express their remorse over Sunil not coming, but they also point out that this will be the hardest on Vinny. They remember what happened last time when Sunil didn't come, which was Vinny freaked out and went Godzilla like he does and he can't find the remote. So Vinny apparently has some serious, like, emotional and self-control issues about not getting what he wants. Although, I mean, that's better than some than the biscuits when they don't get what they want. And having that, because, like, the Biscuits want a lot. Vinny doesn't want a lot. You know what I mean. It's, it's, it's like that. So he has hurricane shouts on top of hurricane burps, as well as super strength and the ability to spin like the Tasmanian devil. That spin cuts down a thick tree that falls over and out the window into the alley. 
when Roger is taking out the trash. <laughs> and Roger's like, what? So back in the present, the pets are afraid and Minnie walks in. Zoe refers to him as Goshzilla. And uh, Russell wants to break the news gently. Then he walks up and Minka shouts the news in a panic. Everyone decides to hide and Zoe criticizes Minka's approach to the situation. Minka apologizes. But then Vinny doesn't seem to be phased and asks if they're playing hide and seek. Um, Russell asks if Vinny heard what happened. Vinny says he did, but he doesn't care and asks if anyone's owner watched some good TV last night. So at Sunil's apartment, I guess. Yeah, it would be an apartment. He lives in the same building as Blythe, I believe. Along with Vinny. So yeah, at Sunil's apartment, uh, Sunil has a bell and is calling for mango and an ice pack, which Blythe brings. Blythe asks if there's anything else she can do. And Sunil says uh, his pillow is a bit lumpy and would like it fluffed. Blythe fluffs the pillow and Blythe asks about how Sunil caught this illness. And Sunil goes on a rant about how it wasn't Vinny because he wouldn't give me anything. Blythe says she wasn't thinking about Vinny, and Sunil continues complaining about Vinny. Now, um, Blythe asks if Sunil wants more mango, and says anything is better than talking about Vinny. And Blythe says something definitely happened between those two. So at the pet shop, Vinny is dancing, and Russell thinks that Vinny is still in denial. Pepper asks if that means he's a ticking time bomb, and Russell says yes. And then goes, tick, 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 and then Minka shouts, kaboom, which freaks out everyone. So uh, Penny wants to subvert the crisis, and Russell says that they just have to keep bringing up Sunil so that the reality sets in. Vinny comes over, and Russell balls up. So he improvises a game in which everyone says their favorite thing about Sunil. The game starts, and Minka says that she loves that Sunil does magic. Pepper loves Sunil's laugh. Penny loves Sunil's furry face. However, when it gets to Vinny's turn, he explodes on them for talking about Sunil. Russell also deduces that something happened to them. He's going to get to the bottom of it. Back at Sunil's, Blythe brings back some mango and explains that it's mango madness. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, one of the things that triggers my cough is laughing at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. She then throws the mango into Sunil's mouth, and I don't I don't think that's a thing you should do. <laughs> With someone who's sick. I mean, does does Blythe think that Sunil's not actually sick? But anyway. Uh, Blythe mentions Vinny as also liking mango. And Sunil chokes and spits out his mango. Christ, I made a, made a really weird typo there. Anyway, yeah, so he begins coughing to cover up mentions of Vinny, and Blythe gives him some water, and that freshens him up, and then uh, she brings up the time he accidentally swallowed bubble bath, and Sunil is thinking about that fondly, so it flashes back to that time... When Sunil and Vinny are in a bath playing with the bubbles, Sunil has a <coughs> bubble French aristocracy wig, while Vinny is wearing a bubble Elvis dude. So as Sunil goes to blow more bubbles, he accidentally inhales them, and uh, his bubble French aristocracy wig uh, pops, 
but uh, Vinny just like like it like strikes his back to help get them out while he's coughing them out, and uh, Vinny then gives him like a bubble puffy top hat, I think. All right, before we continue, two things. One is going to follow us through the rest of the episode. One only comes up one more time. The one that comes up more one more time. Well, two more times, I guess. Because, like, it's his, his general physiology. But shouldn't Vinny technically not like bubble baths? Because, like, he has scales and soap and scales I don't think go well together. Not to mention the fact that, like, he doesn't, like, being too wet as evidenced that one time where he didn't want Zoe's wet dog food. Uh, I don't remember that episode, which one that would be exactly. I think it was Sweet Pepper, but um, I forgot. So, yeah, that's just, that's just a weird bit of missed physiology. Might not be. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think you should give a reptile a bubble bath. Because if you give a reptile a bubble bath, <laughs> his scales might get messed up. Uh, anyway, two, the thing that is probably going to follow us throughout the episode is this episode really gives off a vibe that Sunil and Vinny are gay as heck and that this is a big old lover's quarrel. And it's not really helped to not portray this image because Vinny and Sunil get really melodramatic (laughs) over everything. And this is... I mean, they, they were in a bath together. I know they're animals, but, like, they're animals with some human characteristics. And at least this is somewhat better than Russell maybe having a crush on Blythe. And, you know, thinking about it now, the echoes between... Sunil and Vinny's reactions to everything and Blythe and Russell's reactions to them being similar that's that that's a bit more weird in my opinion as opposed as opposed to this like they they're just really gay this episode that's all I'm saying for right now So, back to the episode. Sunil gets upset because that's a good memory of Vinny and he doesn't want that. He gets even worse and falls over, but Blythe really is not believing any of this. Sunil acts delirious and begs for peanuts. Blythe agrees and Sunil says, Take your time! Because it will lessen the time she's talking about Vinny. So at the pet shop, Russell digs through a toy chest and finds a Sherlock Holmes style hat. He announces that he can begin investigating what happened. Then he says, why don't you just ask me about this? But when they do ask what happened between you and Sunil, he says, nothing. So Russell goes back to his detective plan and says he needs a cool detective name. So he says, how about Cyril McFlip? And Russell says, By Jove, I think she's got it. And I swear that is only a little more thick than how he said it. So, this then transitions into a song titled Cyril McFlip. It's like a Victorian style song, or it's supposed to emulate a Victorian theme. About Cyril McFlip and how he's the best detective, and also about the mystery 
of the gay lovers quarrel. So, some of Cyril's theories are that they wanted to live together in a haunted house. That they wanted to ride a saber-toothed tiger. They were arguing over who could eat more jalapeno peppers, which were not jalapeno peppers. I want to point out, the peppers were red, jalapenos are green. At least that's how I know jalapenos. Uh, who was taller, and who could hold their breath longer. This last lyric effectively floods the Victorian town that this fantasy song takes place in. And it it's a really good song. It I mean, I guess... Like, it doesn't stylistically fit, but it might... I don't know. So, anyway. Cyril, for the remainder of this episode, takes on a British accent and asks everyone to look for evidence. Vinny comes up to Cyril and asks if he should impersonate him. Cyril asks, don't you mean interrogate? And Vinny says, no, I mean hold me under a hot light to get me to talk. Cyril says, capital idea. And it happens. But shouldn't Vinny really love a hot lamp? Because he's cold-blooded and, you know, being in a hot lamp is good for cold-blooded animals. But whatever. The interrogation begins and Vinny won't talk. Like, someone points this out, but Zero points out that this was his idea in the first place, and Vinny says, it was my idea, but I was not going to say anything. However, Cyril offers Mango, and Vinny gets excited, saying how it was his and you-know-who's favorite. (laughs) However, Cyril uh, wants him to hold out until he gives information, and Penny holds uh, Vinny down. Vinny immediately talks, and uh, Vinny tells the story of how Sunil begged him to dance. And so Vinny danced, but Sunil lost interest quickly. But Vinny still danced to try to get his attention back. And he danced his heart out for Sunil. This, this is getting gayer by the second. <laughs> He then, in his mind, went to Broadway, and he danced and was getting a lot of applause. However, he snapped back into reality uh, in the air and landed on Sunil's magic table, and then Sunil snapped at him. Cyril deduces that even if Sunil wasn't sick, they still wouldn't be talking. And he says that Sunil isn't sick, and that's not the reason. However, Vinny says that with some more mango, he will tell you the reason. So at Sunil's place, Blythe brings back the peanut. Blythe says that Sunil is looking worse by the second and that he should be quarantined. Sunil is a bit relieved, but then asks what that means. Blythe explains that being quarantined means that he will have to live in a box and not uh, not ever go to the pet shop ever again. And this causes Sunil to recover from his illness. So the irony of the whole situation is that this episode got delayed because I was sick. And this episode, someone else pretends to be sick. It's like... Ah, uh, jeez. This, it's really dumb. Out of all the episodes that I get sick before doing, it's this one. So, Blythe goes to call the pet shop to tell everyone, but Sunil asks if everyone includes Vinny. Blythe asks what happened and wants Sunil to be honest with her. So, Sunil uh, explains that Vinny was acting like a five-year-old and wanted Sunil to watch him dance. Sunil watches Vinny, and Vinny keeps asking if he's watching, but 
Sunil eventually loses interest and goes back to work on his magic trick that he was preparing. Vinny yells at him and crashes into the table. Blythe asks if that's why, and Sunil says no, because Vinny crashed into his table hundreds of times. Sunil goes on to explain that the reason he's mad is because later, Vinny accuses him of being an evil sorcerer and making his tap shoes disappear to get back at him for crashing into the table. An image of what that would look like of Sunil in, like, wizard robes and a wizard hat and a wizard staff laughing atop. What are those things called? Like a seaside cliff? But it's not a cliff. It's like a mini cliff where, like, waves crash on it. Like like a rocky shoal or a shore? Something like that. That's what that would look like. Uh, Sunil denies this, although admits that it would be a good trick. Vinny asks, what if I broke your wand? And Vinny begins swinging it around, and Sunil says he wouldn't like it. And it breaks. Sunil tells Blythe that that's why they aren't on speaking terms. Blythe says that this is major drama. (laughs) Cyril offers his last mango slice for the rest of the story. Vinny agrees, but says that it doesn't have a happy ending. Vinny explained that he took a short nap, and that when he woke up, his tap shoes were mysteriously off of his feet. So he went to look everywhere for them, and then politely asked Sunil about it, and Sunil dismisses him outright saying, I'm working on my trick. No one cares about your shoes. So Vinny agrees to help him with his trick and take his wand to wave it, but it snaps and Sunil snaps on Vinny. So Cyril reacts to this by also saying that this is major drama. Blythe tells Sunil that avoiding Vinny is the best decision ever. Sunil thinks that this is a trick, but Blythe says, you do the tricks, although since Vinny broke your wand, maybe not. She then explains that he can watch scary movies on his own. Sunil asks if she's willing to watch them with him, but Blythe says, no, they're too scary for me. And Sunil could test this out because Attack of the Giant Mutant Garden Slugs is on soon. Zoe and Penny talk about how lonely Vinny must be and how upset he'll be if he doesn't see Sunil again. And that clicks with Vinny, and he imagines what that would be like. So this list includes riding on a tandem bike alone. Okay, that's fine. Sharing a milkshake with no one. That's a little more conspicuous. Now he's back in the bath and makes a bubble of Sunil that bursts when he tries to hug him. That, I can't, this whole, this whole montage is probably the single gayest thing in the episode. I can't, I just can't, like, like, like I'm I'm not saying like I can't because I can't deal with gay people. I I'm saying like th- this is just very like ultra gay. It's it's very very gay. <laughs> just just the extremeness of the gayness is what I find funny. The the fact that it's going the whole Nine yards with it. Oh, goodness. So, Sunil is also imagining something like that as well. And Blythe asks him about that. And then Sunil tells Blythe that he actually has a confession. 
So Cyril is examining the table and finds something. He calls everyone over, or rather, he tells everyone to gather around. And then Cyril explains what happened. So Cyril begins his explanation of what really happened as opposed to the exaggerated explanations that Vinny and Sunil gave. So he explains that the day was usual, as it usually is, and that Sunil and Vinny were doing the things that they loved, magic and dancing, respectively. That, you know what, that really should have tipped me off. If we're, if we're diving into stereotypes, I mean, I don't know about stereotypes. I don't know. It's, it's really, really, I just kind of associate uh, magic and gay people because of Neil Patrick Harris. But, you know, that's fine. Anyway, anyway, uh, Vinny, as usual, because he's done this over a hundred times, crashes into the table. Later, after a nap, Vinny discovers his shoes are missing and accuses Sunil. Vinny takes the wand and breaks it out of frustration. Cyril pulls out the wand and snaps it back, pointing out that it is a trick wand. Blaith and Sunil arrive, and Sunil says he's sorry for letting him think that he actually broke a wand. Vinny is still upset about his shoes, but then Minka has them and goes, Tap hands! Because she's wearing them on her hand and taps them. Vinny asks why, and Minka reminds him of a time from long ago when they were younger when she asked to borrow them. The, they, they look like they're from the 80s or 90s? Late 80s, early 90s, maybe. And Minka asks, hey, can I borrow your tap shoes at an unspecified date? Probably sometime way in the future. And Minka's like, sure. And Minka's like, huh. And Minka's like, well, you weren't using them while you were asleep, so I can use them. That is another bit of absurdist humor this episode. So this episode has a few things going for it. Absurdity. Gayness. Someone pretending to be British. Like, like, this is, if you love all of those things, this is your episode. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh yeah. I do want to point out, though, that I thought these were the ones that Blythe gave him, because I thought he didn't know what tap shoes were before. So, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Because, like, do, 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 is this a retcon? Is this the first instance of a retcon that I have to admit? Or, no, it's the second, because of, like, Vinny being in a bath. Or maybe this whole show is inconsistent. It's one of these episodes. I don't know. So, Russell actually goes back to being Russell is that he did not see that coming in his normal American Canadian accent. So Vinny Sunil, they both make up and hug it out. However, Vinny has to leave, and then he goes to leave, but then rushes back in for another hug as the episode ends. And that that is this episode. I, I really like this episode. I, I think it's just a good episode. I mean, it still deals in absurd things. But overall, I think this is just a very pleasant episode. It's, it's a very nice, very gay episode. And, you know, more, more episodes of things could be more gay. Also, it has been a considerably long time since I have summarized an episode in under 30 minutes. I know I'm not going to go over, but that's just because of this after stuff.
and not the episode itself. I guess this is a side effect of the new apartment era where, like, I don't know, in the old place, I felt I had a little more rain over everything, but in the new place, I have to focus on time. Or maybe it's just, like, the episode's focusing more and, you know, getting better while still being kind of weird. And I point out the kind of weird, but it doesn't go as absurd elsewhere. I don't know. I thought, like, the hour and 30-minute episode I did a while ago was going to be, like, the norm by the end of this season, but... Well, the end of next season, actually, but... I guess, like, with the new apartment and the episodes and just, like, I don't know, figuring out life in general at this point, these episodes are getting a little shorter. And speaking of shorter, this is where I will end this episode. So, that will do it for this episode of The Littlest Pet Cast. Be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine on... Apple Podcasts on the Google Play Store and wherever else RSS feeds go when they are investigating a gay lover's quarrel with a British accent. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode The Hedgehog in the Plastic Bubble. I shall see you then. Also, fun fact, while I was sick, I started and have finished playing Guacamelee 2, and the thing about the bad guy in that is he also has a cold. And his remedy for that is getting his hands on the sacred guacamole. So, maybe I should get my hands in on that guacamole. Full circle.